So let's start with our first question. You know, why is AI transformation today important and different? And we need to do this level set because it's it is important to understand that there is a big you know thing that's over the top of the industry right now, which is that AI is having an exponential uh, impact on organizations. It's having an impact on work. It's having impact on industries and of course society as a whole. And this kind of impact is an important distinction because we have had linear changes in technology. We actually have quite a, a lot, maybe overwhelming number of linear changes in technology that we have to tackle, but most of those are relatively safe to leave in the hands of technologists to lead. Um, in this particular example, when you have an exponential change, it's really critical for the business to take leadership. So when I'm in executive boardrooms and we're talking about, you know, what are the business priorities for, you know, uh, 2024, what's going on in organizations' mindsets, we're seeing consistently that the number one priority for them is understanding how can they take advantage of AI? How can they uh, address the opportunity, whether it's from, you know, the way that they operate, whether it's um, the way that they collaborate, the way they communicate, uh, and across the, the whole of the employee experience, the customer experience stack. And so this is one of those uh, milestone moments where we have a really big change that's happening. And we've been through this before. We've had other big changes, but most of those other changes have happened over generations or they've happened over decades. We've had longer time periods, right? There's a huge amount of change that happened when we had the internet, websites, we had removal of presence and access barriers with mobile. And then of course, even the mobile app revolution that followed that. But even though those were big changes, they happened over decades. Most people, uh, and myself included, I think we all kind of predicting that AI is really going to have a big impact in years, not decades. So there, the pace of this change is much more significant. The second one that's really interesting, and we'll come back to this with a few examples today, is that what AI essentially does is it removes skill barriers. So it essentially gives you skills that you may not have without AI's assistance. You know, I'm pretty good at PowerPoint and I can build great PowerPoint presentations. If you don't have that skill, AI could potentially give you that capability. I'm a pretty good communicator. I can, you know, write relatively okay emails and things like that. But at the end of the day, I'm not a linguistic expert. I don't, you know, have a deep uh, literary science background. Yet with AI, I can have access to that. Um, and those skills can be used in a variety of ways, not because I possess those skills, but because AI as a co-pilot or an agent or a supportive tool set can help me with those things. And this post-generative AI era is different than the era before it. We do have a, a huge, um, acceleration of AI use cases, AI application. We kind of figured out how to use the experience layer with conversational engines and more. And so we really have a, a bunch of opportunity in front of us. Now, this brings up uh, a broader discussion, which I know we're all kind of working through, which is, you know, what should we do about this? You know, if it's coming fast, um, you know, it's important to learn, but why might it be useful to embrace and learn a bit sooner? So pass it to you, Maya, because I know you spend a lot of your time with change management and helping organizations through those transitions with analytics and more. So I'd love to see if you have any, uh, you know, perspectives on this. Absolutely. Um, I mean, AI doesn't stand for apocalypse of intelligence. Uh, it stands for artificial or perhaps better yet, alternative uh, intelligence. Uh, we need that alternative way of thinking. And throughout history, like you said, we've constantly demonstrated our ability to adapt to new te technologies and AI is no different, right? Um, the rate of, of technological change uh, is unprecedented. And like you said, what used to take decades now happens in a matter of years or even months uh, and um, it, it it's time to embrace this new technology um, it's here to stay obviously and the sooner we embrace it the more time we'll have to harness its benefits uh, like you said automating routine and mundane tasks uh, freeing us up for um, you know high order skills um, and um, we need to also consider the ethical aspects and I know that comes up a lot um, and, and data privacy and bias in, in algorithms etc um, but you know it, it's a new or relatively new technology in the in the post generative AI um, era now and we're kind of learning as we go but we do need to embrace it we do need to adapt uh, and um, work alongside with it. 
I love that comment because, you know, there is this really interesting challenge, which is today it's not interwoven in the fabric of our organization, maybe not our industry and certainly not society yet, but we all can see it coming, right? And as it becomes more interwoven, the consequences in increase, right? You know, the mistakes that you make, especially if you cross some of those, um, you know, governance or ethical issues or things like that, you know, there could be much more significant consequences there. So I, I totally agree. I love this idea of like, let's embrace it sooner. Um, let's, you know, we're going to make mistakes, but let's you know, understand that to do those mistakes now is much less consequential than it will be in a few years. And Absolutely. I think that's kind of where we, we kind of land for our response to this question. It's important to embrace sooner. And again, years, not decades. So it's really important to understand that this is going to be a big tumultuous period that we're going to be going through. And, um, you know, it's going to be a ton of learning uh, as we go through this. So we'll have to all stretch together. So let's let's kind of um, look at this other angle of this, which is the way collaboration changes. We've talked about productivity gains um, and we've talked about some of the quality metrics um, and then the importance of the data underlying it. But another interesting finding that we've had is the way it affects collaboration. So um, there's this uh, old analogy, one plus one equals three. Basically, the idea is, you know, if Maya, you have an hour and I have an hour um, and we collaborate together, we'll produce something on average that's a better quality outcome than if you just had two hours, right? Or if I just had two hours. And that's the whole point of collaboration, right? You know, the sum is greater than the whole of the parts. Now there's some risks there, right? If we add too many people to that equation, the skills and expertise that we're bringing to the table that allows us to improve the quality, those diminish in value because there's, we're just not gonna maximize or utilize those skills and experiences. And so, you know, there's a, there's a cost as you scale collaboration. And there's also a cost the second you have more than one person collaborating because what ends up happening is you have miscommunication, you have communication overhead and more. And so the reason we don't use everything, you know, the reason everything is not collaborative uh, in most organizations is because of those costs, right? Because it's not always the best uh, outcome. Um, and uh, from an ROI perspective, it's uh, return on investment. It's not as great. What's interesting is in the co-pilot experience, we're seeing two major shifts. The first one is that each individual has an agent or an AI, like a co-pilot. And so each person who's working with that, you know, of course, is bringing their own experiences and skills. But remember, they're also bringing all of the skills that the AI agent has, as well as the knowledge the AI agent has access to. So in that scenario, I'm able to do far more in a collaborative flow than I could ever do individually, especially when we talk about skills, um, digital skills, especially, uh, and how these tools give us more capabilities. What's more is each person has their own co-pilot. So you might use it in different ways in the flow of collaboration. Like let's say right here, we're preparing, preparing an outline for an upcoming meeting. You know, we're providing additional details. We're adding some additional information to it. We're turning it into agenda. And each of those sequences, we're each using AI but we're using it in different ways, right? The other participant in this dialogue is using it to add content and pulling content from different data sources. Whereas here, we're using it to do a lot of formatting, a paragraph and then agenda work as an example. And so that sort of model of how we use it is important because it's both how we learn from one another, um, really, really powerful uh, learning from these uh, pilots with, uh, you know, these uh, previews with Copilot is the way people learn together through this collaboration flow. But it also changes, uh, again, that, that value Value of outcome because now we're able to produce more you know one times AI plus one times AI equals maybe a lot more than three the other thing that's interesting is that whole collaboration flow we just did can also be summarized can be actioned upon right the data you know from transcripts to what activities happened to even getting a sense of like um, you know taking this result and combining with another result of a different set of collaboration all is wrapped around AI as well for use cases and potential. So when we see that you know again 60% baseline, Copilot adds more, plugins add more. You know you take something like uh, this effect on collaboration and it adds a compounding amount more. Um, that's already really interesting uh, and worth thinking about.